Hello, everyone. Welcome back here to Larry Q. Kagan Stadium on the farm. Number one, Stanford Cardinal up 1-0 over the Seattle U Red Hawks. And for anyone, if people told you that Stanford's always 70 and sunny here, they were not talking about tonight. <laughs> A little bit cold, a little bit smoky, but always a great night for playoff soccer. And right now, you have to think, if you're Seattle U, you're happy being just down 1-0. Yeah, that's true. On the other hand, and it, this could be a 3-0 game, which is why they'd be happy it's only 1-0, but they haven't shown a whole lot of attacking bite. They had one great opportunity where Manthai just pushed one wide, but outside of that, and that, that took a serious miscue from the Cardinal back line. Seattle really hasn't shown an ability to connect and link and, and keep a sustained possession in their attacking half, it, which is eventually what's going to have to happen. Uh, I mean, you could try to play counterattacking soccer, but at, at some point you're going to need to get numbers forward. Yeah, we'll see if there's a different approach or for Seattle in the second half. They have 45 minutes left guaranteed right now in their season. Again, a su another successful season so far for Seattle. Another WAC tournament title. And I know we've mentioned Stanford, of course, 41 game unbeaten streak, 29 in the conference. But Seattle as well with a little bit of an unbeaten streak coming in. So far, eight games without a defeat. And then four straight victories. Here's Stanford aggressive early. Chow gives that into the corner. Comes back out. And even with the chances Stanford had in the first half, you'd still have to say the backs for Seattle still did a pretty solid job. Oh, yeah, certainly they did. I mean, they they were peppered all 45 minutes, basically, and to just concede one, they, they did well. Here comes Seattle U on the attack. And I think even early, you kind of see that's one of the more aggressive yeah. attacks there that they've had. Yeah, you, you, you get a steal, you try to counter, you try to – build that way and they did foray into Stanford territory if you will but didn't do much beyond that here's Atlanta Cook well, we touched on in the first half Wadi this isn't a team that's going to sit back with a 1-0 lead the Cardinal they're looking for more and Seattle's not only going to have to attack, but they're going to have to defend superbly to, to continue to give itself a chance because Stanford will not park the bus. And as we mentioned, going into the end of that first half and the start of the second half, too, they're pretty fortunate, again, to have a 1-0 score right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, in their minds, they think it should be 1-1 at least. Yeah. But even, again, with... And this is another testament to the Stanford side. With as good as de with as good of defense that Seattle played, still so many opportunities for the Cardinal. Of course, ten shots, forced a couple of saves, a couple others went off the off the post. It's not a walk on post anymore, Wadi. <laughs> oh no, not at all. Everything's going up with the NCAA clearinghouse as we speak. Here we go inside for Stanford. Nice block, and here's the follow another block. And again, Seattle's defense coming up big, and then there is a clear by Manti. And Kiki Pickett had that second attempt there, really ran on to that one, but the, the defense holding strong there for the Red Hawks. Lena Cook's going to send that one in. Now the other way comes Seattle. Nice ball outside. And a good job there of defense by Kiki Pickett. I remember when she first got here, just seeing her speed down uh, the, the wings, just zipping around uh, a smaller player in stature, but her, her speed is incredible to watch. Cardinal again on the attack. 
And sent out again by Seattle. I believe that was Hannah Carruthers sending it out. One of the few seniors in the starting side for Seattle. Yeah, Carruthers is an, an all-conference player for this uh, Red Hawks side and this year uh, being named first team All-WAC. Also a WAC All-Tournament. Here comes a ball in. Pretty well defended. Manti tries to get it out, but Stanford again retains possession. Cook's going to send one wide. She's got Michelle Chow. Chow now going to go. She's going to try to set up a cross and send that one behind the net. Good run there by Chow. Good ball by Cook to get it to her. Yeah, and, and, and Chow was just kind of forced off her, her back foot there. Couldn't really get in uh, to that cross. Goal kick from Romero. Butterfield with it, now it comes back the other way with Stanford. Kuhlman, she's responsible for the first and only goal so far today. Stanford with the throw in midfield. Again, as we've seen early already, as Kevin's already mentioned, this is not a team that's just going to hold on to that 1-0 lead. They're definitely looking to add. Well, this is a team that smells goals a mile away. And Seattle right now is trying to weather the storm. Anytime Stanford has a little bit of momentum going forward, just trying to get some clears. Of course, we saw Stanford make two mistakes, I guess you could say, on some clears and, and back opportunities in that first half that led to potential chances for Seattle. And now here comes Seattle the other way. It's Carruthers. And that touch a little too hard, so Pickett was able to take it away. Outside, here's Coleman. Coleman tried to send it in. It was blocked down, I believe, by Olivia Ovenel. Carruthers, nice move to get around. There's the ball in. It finds the back of the net. Carruthers with a great move, and they're going to give Michelle Chow the credit for the goal. 2 nothing Stanford. Why, what a, a Ball in there by Savannah Coleman. I didn't think that was going to get through. Yeah, I think everyone was kind of surprised of what happened. I, I saw Coleman celebrating, Chow celebrating. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if anyone really knew what happened, and then the next thing you know, Romero's got to take it out the back of the net. Yeah, that just kind of snuck up on the Red Hawks there. That was one of the more hopeful balls sent in by the Cardinal, but they, they made it work. And just like that, I think you see the, the effect of it right off the kick to get this play going. Seattle just tries to almost maybe catch Stanford falling asleep there after a goal. But now here comes Stanford the other way. They have Chow over here if they, if they can find her. Aggressive defense there by Holly Rother Rothering. Does that one send back? But easy play there for Germa. Well, down two goals in the second half. I mean, if you're Seattle, you, you really have to start to chase the game. And obviously, Stanford has the more talent, unquestionably. But if the Red Hawks want to get back into this one, they're going to have to continue to the high press like this and really force the issue. Grandma sends in. That was Coleman. 
Three-point day for Savannah. And now it looks like they're actually going to change that and credit it as an own goal. That's what I was going to say. I didn't, I didn't think anyone on Stanford touched that in the box. I didn't either. It was first announced as a goal for Chow. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that looked like an own goal. I, yeah, I didn't really think Chow was all that close to it, which was – like kind of took me by surprise that all of a sudden it's in the back of the net. Nice defense there from Chow on Emily Zimmer. And Sanford will send it back. Here's Atlanta Cook. And now Germa. Chow with it. Some good defense there by Gina Lee. Nothing called there. Romero will send it back out. And that one will be out of bounds. Good effort there by JoJo Harbor to keep it in. Well, we've seen a lot of goals from Pac-12 schools in the first round of the NCAA tournament. USC winning 6-0. UCLA winning 5-0. Right now, Washington State up 3-0 in the 62nd minute against Montana. And then Arizona winning 3-0 against Denver to set up a Thursday night contest against second-seeded Tennessee in the second round next weekend. We're going to have a whistle here. Ball will go back to Stanford. I believe they're going to call that on Liahi Manti. And I tell you what, now it's a 2-0 match. How important was that goal that they missed early in the first half? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, all the more important because, like we said, they're not going to get that many opportunities against Stanford. Nice ball in action there between Kuhlman and Pickett. Now Stanford will slow it down and reset again. They have DiBiase down here on this side. They'll play it over to Harbor and back to Germa. Stanford's own version of the old A chant going on now here from the <laughs> from the stands. <laughs> Again, a good crowd out here tonight. Yeah, all things considered, with uh, the air quality index uh, being a factor, questions about whether this game would even uh, get underway. They're checking the AQI every 20 minutes. Nice showing here. Here's Chow. She's going to go wide. Harbor, like she was thinking about sending it in, now going to get a little closer. Gets that over to to Goad, and then back to Germa. Long chance here for Stanford, long possession. Goad out to Chow, and that will go the other way. That works just fine for the Cardinals. If you can kill a minute plus every time you touch, uh, you touch the ball, you're uh, se severely limiting the opportunities for the Red Hawks. And Hyatt plays it back again. A little over 11 minutes played so far here in the second half. Winner of this match will play Clemson and Ole Miss next Thursday, right back here at Kagan. And the first match here will be Hofstra and Wisconsin. Hofstra, we mentioned, beating the fourth-seeded Boston College Eagles 4-1. to one. And then uh, Wisconsin taking care of Memphis 3-0. Here's a chance for Manti get to it. I mean, there's just so much speed over there, so much pace by... Kiki Pickett, we mentioned again, not the biggest in size, but can absolutely fly up and down yeah. the pitch. That's for sure. And then look at her just being scrappy out there to fight and get a chance to earn a throw in for Stanford. Some other finals from the first round. Third seed to Texas A&M, 1-0 over North Texas. They will play TCU in the second round. The Horned Frogs taking care of the BYU Cougars 2-1. 
Tennessee getting past Louisville 2-1 in the first round. Go back out to Germa. Now Cook. Every now and then, Seattle starts advancing that pressure a little bit higher. And here comes Kiki Pickett. Now Coleman, nice turn. She's going to get one with the left Ooh. and just shot it wide. A lot of pressure on her. I believe that was, might have been Bailey Hall who was on her, but still great turn to get a, even a chance to get that shot off there by yeah, Coleman. That was, that was a great attempt there. And you mentioned once Seattle he starts pressing high, that's going to open up passing lanes, and that freed up Kiki Pickett to make that run, to send that ball in. So uh, it's certainly a, a double-edged sword if you're the C uh, Red Hawks. But, of course, without a doubt, a risk that they had, have no choice but to take now. Yep. They got to do it. Here's Zimmer. Tried to send a ball wide. Good job again by Pickett. To break that up, and again, possession back to Stanford. I mean, you're not here to lose 2-0 if you're Seattle U. No, you might as well. If you're going to lose, you gotta, you got to go out swinging, right? So if you, if, you, if you give up another goal, too, a byproduct of trying to put one on the Cardinal. And now look at Stanford increasing their pressure. Yeah. Good uh, effort there to keep it in by... Michelle Chow, but it'll be a throw in for the Red Hawks. And Ty's going to send it. It's a foot race for Ray and Cook. And the Pac-12 Defender of the Year, no problem with that one. So calm and composed. And Ooh. almost another misplay there by Stanford. I don't think they felt Jesse Ray coming behind yeah. them. And now here's Cook. A couple of hairy moments for this back line, but they haven't been burned. Of course, Lena Cook, Pac-12 Defender of the Year. Everywhere she goes, she or everything around her is known for defense. Obviously, the last couple of years been dating Stanford defensive back Frank Buncom. Yeah, great uh, defensive back for the Cardinals. Here comes a ball in by Harbor. Here it comes back now. Seattle trying to find a way to get it out, but now Chow with it. Chow makes a move to Coleman. She turns to her left. Ooh. Just couldn't get the whole foot on that one and send it wide. We've seen a couple of good left turns now from Coleman here in this half to create some more chances. Yeah, yeah. Coleman feels like she can get another one in there. Has the what is now the game-winning goal should the score line stand. And certainly looking for a multi-goal outing. Kind of been that target forward here in the second half. And Ty sends it wide. Stanford back on it. Little under half an hour to go here. Regulation. Goal scored by Kuhlman in the first half, and then an own goal here in the second. Originally credited to Shao, but I think correctly overturned. There's Garma. And miscommunication there by Stanford. Seattle tried to advance it, but of course Atlanta Cook steps up, brings it back in to Stanford third. Nice ball there by Coleman to Chow. Chow tried to send one in, but it was blocked down by Gina Leet. All things considered, Gina Leet's had a very solid match yeah, so far. No, we, we've called her name a, a few times here. And now Sessie G is going to come in. Looks like she's going out for Bella Breed. Bell getting the, the, the starting nod today. And Bell, the sophomore, 
from Milton High School in the Atlanta area. Nice ball, and again, blocked away. Coleman with it, and just sent it a little wide of the goal mouth. She's hunting right now, Savannah. That one sent in by Cook for Chow. Good job there by Gina Lee again, and then cleared back. And again, Atlanta Cook trying to bring it back, but now here comes Seattle. They're going to send one. And even when they try these long balls, the Stanford def that Stanford back line is all over it. Nice block there. Pick it, trying to clear, but it was blocked by Seattle, and she finally gets it out. Second one off of Red Hawk, and it'll be a Stanford throw-in. Very high pressure now for yeah. Seattle. Uh, they, they sensed an opportunity. They've seen Stanford and uh, have a, a couple of issues. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, JoJo Harbor was coming in hot on that one. Yeah, she was. Stanford trying to make something happen. A lot of space down there, but broken up there by Isabel Butterfield. In Seattle right now, they just can't find a way to have possession on the other side of, of mid midfield here. Yeah, I mean, that figured to be the case when you're going up against the number one team in the country. It's going to be tough for a lower tier conference champion, no matter really who it is, to try to have sustained possession against a team like Stanford, the defending champs. I mean, e even when they're trying to get out of their defensive third, it's almost like there's nowhere for them to, to run. Stanford all over the Red Hawks. Goes back to Germa. Now Lana Cook. Germa surveying the pitch. Now to Goad. Out to Harbor. Now going to go to Chow. Chow uses her body to shield the defender. Coleman, back to Coleman. Try to get one in, but nice job defending by Olivia, Olivia Ovenell. And Stanford will pull it back and take more time off the clock. You can hear from Romero telling her side to pick it up, put the pressure on. And communication is such a big part of being a goalkeeper. Now as a freshman, you imagine that that communication will continue to improve as uh, she grows in her career. And the thing is, even with that, just looking at this game, as there's a good run right now from Jordan DiBiase. Did the Coolman try to get it to DiBiase? No. There's a scr scramble right now for it, and then finally cleared out by Seattle. Yeah, DiBiase went down easy. I think she was looking for the spot foul. Wasn't going to get it. But again, going back to your point about Romero, just looking at the Seattle side, all the youth that they have on on this team, and with that, you think about some of the players that we've really called on a lot as there's a nice ball at Chow. And by Harbor, couldn't find anybody. And again, another clearance by Seattle. Jesse Ray will give a give a run at it. But it comes back again. And we were tilted one way in the first half. We're tilted the other way yep. here in the second. And there's a look and a shot by DiBiase, but blocked away. 
Jesse Ray. The shots are 18-2, Stanford now. Now they count th those shots that are blocked. They count as shots, but, but they're piling up. They have eight shots already in the second half, and we're only you know midway through it. But again, with the Seattle side, obviously Ariana Romero is a freshman. Gina Leet's a freshman. You have Liahi Manta, who's a sophomore. A lot of other freshmen on the, in the starting starting 11 for Seattle as well. So as we've mentioned, it's been incredible how fast they've been able to become competitive at the D1 level. That chance, it looks like it's going to be going on for yep. years to come. Yeah, especially with a coach as accomplished uh, as uh, the one that the Red Hawks have in Julie Woodward. And she has done a great job over two plus decades bringing this program from the NAIA ranks to the NCAA D1. Yossi sends it wide. And Sam Height couldn't make something happen with it. Savelle Rojas now gonna come in for Seattle. Macario's back in for Stanford. We have Carly Malaski in for Stanford as well. Yeah, those, those are substitutions that let you know that Stanford isn't looking to play on the back foot at all. You get, you get Macario in there at Pac-12 forward of the year. She, she's going to look to add to her team leading point total of 29. Jay Boissier back in as well. And Ty gives it up. Now they'll try to go wide with it. That's Rothering. Here's Rothering again. Jesse Ray. That one's blocked, but then got back again. But Gina Leet wasn't ready for it, and it will go harmlessly out for a goal kick. One thing we should note is that you can call the game after 70 minutes. If uh, the AQI gets north of 200, this could be called. You have to get to 70 minutes, so like kind of like playing four and a half innings of baseball. Uh, you, you have to get to the bottom of the fifth at the least for, for baseball you know, with a rain delay or something to make it a full game. We are now in the 71st minute, so should the air quality uh, worsen here, and the scoreline stays the same, it, it could be over. And I believe last time we heard it was in the 180 range. Here comes Katarina. A little too big of a touch there. That one's going to be sent wide. And I believe... Emily Zimmer was trying to see if something could happen, get it forward, but yeah, you might as no well. Avail. Oh, absolutely. But even earlier today, I believe the AQI was up around the 240s. Yeah, and you know, we were talking with the uh, you know, Stanford administration about that. I mean, 240, that, that's well above oh, yeah. uh, the uh, where you need to be. Of course, I think anything over 150 is supposed to be considered in the unhealthy range. Yeah, high school football in the South Bay, I think it needs to be below 160 or somewhere around there. So I think there have been some cancellations with high school football in the area. Yes, there were, I, I noticed that there were a couple of high school playoff games this weekend that have been moved, I want to say, to Monday. Well, Monday Night Football. Here comes Jay. Nice ball fighting for it. Going to go out of bounds. Good fight there by Malatsky. And, and, and a great play there by Macario in a hold-up play to touch that back to Boissier to set that whole thing up. I think a player like Macario would just turn and go with, with you know her scoring capabilities. But, no, a very unselfish player and showed showed why right there. Of course, whenever you see motion like that, you just wonder if she's going to get a chance to get that back on her foot and let one fly from the top of the box. Corner end for Stanford. That one sent out. And there's Katarina Macario giving chase, but she won't be able to catch up to it, and it will go 
Out of bounds, throw in Red Hawks. But that stopped a potential counterattack. Seattle U had one player leak and it almost got on to that ball before Macario kind of broke that thing up. Bailey Hall will come back in. She replaces Jesse Ray. Jesse Ray's given a couple of good runs here in the second half for Seattle. And she is their leading scorer, leading assist, or leading everything offensively. So I imagine we'll probably see Ray get back in down two goals, but well, that's yet to be determined, obviously. Yeah, this might be that. You know, in, uh, to compare it to basketball, fourth quarter, you get your starters out there yep. early in the fourth of the last five minutes or so. Mm -hmm. They're ready to go to close it out. Here's Pickett. Try to get to Macario, but that is sent away into the stands. Two goals is going to be tough enough to overcome, but Stanford gets a, another one here. You could probably uh, put the nail in the coffin. It, lo it just looks like Stanford's looking for that finishing touch. They've had a couple of nice chances here in the second half so far for it, too. Here's Germa. CCG has a bit of room over here on this left side, close to us. They want to send one deep. Burns going to go inside. There's Macario. Cleared out for the time being. Nice move there by Sam Hyatt. DiBiase, Macario. She's dangerous from anywhere, especially here. She lines one up and sends it wide. The, uh, even, even from the crowd, you could tell that yeah. a little bit of energy once she started lining one up to put it on goal. And that, that's what she brings. When, when you have the resume that Katarina has, you know, the crowd kind of takes a collective deep breath because something uh, incredible might be on the way. And with that, we have 15 minutes to go. Again, 2-0 Stanford. Again, the winner will play either Clemson or Ole Miss next Thursday as we're going to have a foul player down for Seattle. Looks like she's holding her head. Might have taken a hit to the face or something. Now, the way her legs are, are kind of moving makes you feel like, uh, yeah, this isn't good. No. And I know, obviously, as of late, they're a little a lot of research and study that have been going on with head injuries, of course, with football. But soccer is one of those as well where I think it kind of goes under the radar a little bit just because I think people obviously don't look at it as much of a contact sport or collision sport, I guess yeah. you should say, as football. But it's right up there as well. And, of course, so we can get a number here, we'll let you know. Yeah, number is blocked from our view. Trainer obviously. Like might have a nosebleed there too. Yeah. That is number 23. Holly Rothering gets a good round of applause. Obviously, we hope that she's okay. Yeah, maybe an elbow to the nose. It looks like Jesse Ray, I believe, will be coming back in. That was a quick break for Jesse Ray. As Holly Rothering walks off, of course, if we at least can see anything from over here in updates, we will make sure to give it to you. And there is the reset. It will go back to Romero. The sporting play there. And here we go. Hook up here to Cassie. 
Ibiasi will draw a whistle, but a quick, quick restart here for Stanford. Now again, this this team wants one more goal at the very least. And no real, uh, of course, up two goals, goals. You don't need to hurry anything, but and this team's still playing with urgency. Here comes Seattle. This might be the most I think I've seen up in an attacking situation for them. Here's Manthai. Checked by Verma. Tried to get one in. I think Verma got a piece of that one. And Jordan DiBiase will take, set that one back. And again, Stanford will run some more clock out. High pressure there by Jesse Ray. A little bit of pickle action now for Stanford. I can do that better than anyone in the country. They know how to pass in tight spaces. Here's Alana Cook. Jay has two on her and she'll lose possession. Here comes Seattle. They might have had a chance there to get one, but not the best first touch. And Mantha had that on her foot momentarily just outside of the box. And now here comes Stanford with a potential chance to counter. But they might have tried to either get that one to Katarina in the middle. They still have a chance with it. Kessie with it. She tried to get one off, but it was blocked down. And that was almost dangerous. A nice move, Kessie. She has a shot. Nice Ooh. save, Romero. Yeah, Ceci G, all sorts of space here on that near side. Let it rip, and Romero up to the task. If uh, Seattle has any sort of a pulse, uh, it, it was kept alive there by yeah, at, Romero. At first, for a second, it looked like that was going to go straight to Romero, and it had a little late. Late action to it. Romero did a good job adjusting. And, of course, did a good job of controlling rebounds as well. Pick it. So it's going to go out and a throw in for Seattle. Here comes a ball in. Zeus. Maybe misplayed that one a little bit, but there was nobody there. And that one's going to go out for a corner. Dangerous uh, moment there for Stanford. Yeah, Actually, it looks like it's just going to be a deep throw in. That's right. Excuse me. Throw in. Uh, you know, it's right near that corner flag. Gene Elite sends it in. Tried to go wide with it. Comes back in. Oh, that was a little adventure. <laughs> yes, it was. A, a great play there by Kiki Pickett to, to work Rojas off the ball. And now Goad will come back in, replacing Jordan DiBiase. She was close a couple of times to putting the third goal up for Stanford. And now Allison Johan Seuss will have a goal kick as we approach 10 minutes to go here in regulation. And we're going to have another sub here for Seattle. And good to see number 23, Holly Rothering, coming yep. back in the match. And if I'm Seattle, that's just wasted 30 seconds. Uh, great to get Rothering back in, but uh, time's wearing thin. And here's Kiki Pickett, does a good job of shielding off Bailey Hall. And Stanford, they can go wide here. They choose not to. Cassie G had a bunch of room down here on this left side. I think Stanford's just going to play on, wasting some clock. 
Here's Katarina. Nice move. Now outside. Jay sends one in. No block down. The shot is a little high and wide. That was Malatsky again. I had the space to get it off. 21 shots tonight for Stanford. They can certainly pile up the attempts along with the goals. And now here's Katarina. Dangerous wherever she touches it. Gets some space, puts it on, and that was blocked. And now back in, Macario sends it back out to JoJo Harbor. Here's G. And now Harbor will send that one back out to Germa. G, nice ball to Macario. She's going to put one in. Comes back out, G, another one in, no one home. But back to G, let's do it one more time, shall we? <laughs> G trying to beat two, can't, so gets it back out to Harbor. And nicely done by Ceci G. There. Absolutely. And Stanford will slow it down. We're in the 83rd now. Germa. Nice run there by Germa. And go, and that sends back out. Now here comes Jesse Ray. Stanford has numbers back on defense. Here comes Hall, sends one in, and nobody home. And Germa will send that one out for a Seattle throw. Yeah, looking back post there, as you mentioned, nobody on the other side. At least you get a final third throw in here. They've had a few of these in the second half, but really just nothing too threatening at all here in the second half. You see the frustration there for number 14, Olivia Ovenel, to try wanting her teammates down there to pick up the pace. And now number 12, looks like Michaela Nori will be coming in. And Coleman coming back in for Stanford for Kessie G. Good appearance out tonight for Kessie G in that second half. Yeah, had that great shot that really made Romero work. Is Cecily the junior making her 12th appearance of the season? Of the season, yeah. Deep throw in. Seattle puts it in the box. Tried to head it back in a little bit closer. Ball in. Nothing there because a shot by Hannah Carruthers. She got under it a little bit. Be a goal kick. And now this is where you, I think we'll see Seattle pick up that pressure again. And Vermin will send it deep. And it's just so effortless for, for Macario to get possession there. Nice ball in, and some contact, and they're going to get the call. Malatsky <laughs> trying well, to get away with that one there. I mean, that's see, either a foul or a corner kick. Uh, the referee split the difference there, but that was looked to be clearly off Seattle. Yeah, I think I think. If anything, it was probably. Okay, now they're, uh, as I was going to say, his, uh, she was taking it from a goal kick spot. No. Uh, certainly appeared to be some contact. Yeah, when I heard the whistle, uh, uh, that's what I was thinking, is that they were probably calling the foul on that one. Nice ball there by Pickett. And Stanford again back with possession. Under five minutes to go now here at Kagan. 2 0 Stanford here in the first round of the women's NCAA tournament. Here's Coleman. She's had an eventful night. And here's Go giving pressure. Nice takeaway. Nice tackle there. Go. Now to Coleman. Couldn't connect. And Pickett's going to get it out here 
to Harbor. And that one sent away and out of bounds. Contrary to proper belief, this is not baseball over at Sunken Diamond. Yeah. If the ball goes into the th into the stands, they have to give it back. Same with softball. You can't keep those softballs. What I a ball by Macario. Coleman, some aggressive defense there. Yeah, that and was Coleman's nice. down, a little s slow to get up. And Michaela Mori, very, very physical there, nicely done. Yeah, and Coleman's still down. She has not moved much. You hope this is nothing more than a cramp. She's been out there for a while, obviously just got back in, but she's been busy. And that clock went off a couple more seconds there, even after the whistle. And they they essentially made a, they said to the to the bench the trainer didn't need to come out. She's all right. Yeah, it's like Coleman's going to be fine. Always a good sign to see. Of course, that's another thing with these tournaments. A big part of it is also health. Yeah. Of course, Stanford a very very deep team, good team here. Right. But you want as many hands on deck as possible. And a couple of years ago, they lost Andy Sullivan in the second round in their second round matchup. They ended up losing to Santa Clara here. And they were the number one overall seed. And the reset goes out of bounds, and it will be throwing Stanford. And send it up. Cario couldn't come up with it. Goad. Here's Seattle, that's a nice play there by 21. Going bad, they got it to Jesse Ray. And now Lena Cook just calmly gets that one over to Harbor. The pressure again is high for Seattle. And we'll have a foul called. I believe that was on Manthai. A little over two minutes to go now. For Kari Jones, will get the opportunity to heat up as he's been so eagerly waiting for. Of course, our producer over here. He looks pretty comfortable in his hoodie. I think that's. I think that's a front. We're going to have a whistle there on Seattle. Ball goes back to Stanford. And if you're the Red Hawks, it's about miracle time. Yep. Uh, we've seen two goals in two minutes before, but we're playing the number one team in the country. Atlanta Cook sends it in. Head it down, but stays with Stanford's Macario. It's a J now back to Katarina. Stanford still with it. Cario puts one in. Anytime it comes off her foot. Yeah. Put a charge into that one. Approaching one minute to go. Seattle, broken up there by Germa. And that went all over Jay's head. Macario and Coleman are over there for Stanford. And here comes Macario. She takes a touch inside with the right off the post. But the follow through is in. And finally, Malatsky. Gets the, her goal. She's been looking for it all second half. And it's 3-0 Stanford. Even Seattle's new scholarship player couldn't stop that one being the post. And it looks like Stanford can look on to go, getting ready for Clemson or Ole Miss. It, it stopped the first shot from Macario. Romero got a piece of it, sent it into the post, but then it just bounced right back to Malatsky, who 
drilled it into the back of the net. 90th minute goal for Stanford. Icing on the cake, if you will. Everybody forward now for Seattle. And that one sent back out. Carruthers will have it. She sends it back in. Jesse Ray battling with Cook. They'll go wide. Carruthers. Defended very aggressively there by Kiki Pickett. And the final 10 seconds will go off. And that will do it for the first round here at Kagan. The Stanford Cardinal, two goals that they account for at the own goal in the early second. 3-0 the final score. Again, 24 shots to three is the final count there. And I think just overall, a couple of miscues I know in the back end. But overall, a good, good outing here for the Stanford side. Yeah, Stanford did what it needed to do tonight. They took care of business. They, they advanced in convincing fashion. You mentioned it, just a, a couple of miscues along that back line. Manthai had a great opportunity in the first half to get this one level at one, just pushed it wide. There was a, another kind of a iffy situation there in the second half where they played it back to Hanzus. Maybe not the most confident play there, but still, I mean, they outshot him 24 to 3. This could have been a 5 0 victory or even 6 0. And you know, just a great night overall for Pac 12 soccer. All five teams move on to the second round, those being Stanford, USC, UCLA, Arizona, and Washington State, and they win their first round matches by a combined score of 22 to one. Washington State, the only side to concede, and they defeated Montana five to one as they await winner of Georgetown and Central Connecticut State. But a uh, good night for uh, Power Five West Coast soccer. Good night indeed, and of course now add another tally to that unbeaten streak for Stanford. It is now sitting at. 42 again as we mentioned next Thursday they will await the winner of Clemson and Old Miss and that'll be right back here at Kagan and of course with that will end the Seattle Red Hawks season another good season for them we mentioned the youth on their team a lot of the players that are coming back they definitely will look to be right back here again next season yeah this is a team that could face Stanford again in the first round next year or maybe a UCLA a USC uh, they could be back in the NCAA tournament. Uh, their, their goalkeeper certainly uh, proved to be very solid. Uh, th those goals she gave up, didn't really have a chance on any of them. And uh, yeah, she's solid. They've, they've got some interesting pieces in the field. And, and yeah, they could, they could be back here next year. With that 3-0 lead, it means everything's all right now here on the farm. For Kevin Danham, Jordan Watkins, Thanks again for tuning in, and again, prayers to our neighbors north and south of us dealing with wildfires. We'll see you again next time for the playoffs.